great to have you here. Welcome to the podcast with me and my guests from around the world. Welcome to the Simon Filer podcast. Welcome to this podcast. Let's get into it, shall we? On the Simon Filer podcast. Wisdom has turned my guest today into a confident warrior. Harley has experienced countless emotions, including pain, helplessness, depression, loss, fear, and hopelessness, and many more. And she's not only survived these, but Harley has absolutely thrived. She believes firmly that everyone deserves to live the life of their dreams and looks forward to teaching people the art of survival. Welcome, Harley Tai, and thank you so much for your time today. You are welcome, Salon. And by the way, I would like to say thank you to you for giving me this chance to have an interview with you. This means a lot to me. It's my pleasure, Harley. I've enjoyed working with you, and I'd like to spread your love to everybody else so they can see how fantastic you are. 2020 has certainly been a challenging year. Now with the second wave of the coronavirus pandemic, but to begin the year, we had the absolutely devastating bushfires here in Australia, which prompted you to write your most recent book release, a children's book, Kayla Koala and Her Mama. It's a gorgeous book with a very important message following the bushfires. How did you come to write this, Harley? Long story cut short. I was so emotional when witnessing the bushfires in our country. At the end of last year, 2019, at the beginning of this year, 2020. And for having the desire to write this book, I had a couple, but I want to address a few uh, main points. Koala has been my favorite animal. When I arrived to Australia in 1991 as a refugee, the first thing that connected me to this country was koala. And I happened to see the picture of Mother Goala with her joey and her back. And I asked everybody, is it real? <laughs> is it real? Yeah, is it animal existing? And my Australian said, yes, it's koala. That was the first time I heard the word koala. And in my heart, I don't know what happened, but I, my heart was filled full of love to koala because I love the picture of Mother and her joey. And as a mother, I love my daughter so much too. Later, I learned that koala was Australia's iconic animal. And I learned that nowhere else in the world had this beautiful animal. And after that, koala became my one of favorite animal. And wherever I went around the world, I bought it to people that, hey, don't you know that in Australia we have koala? If you come to our country, you need to see our koala. It's unique, it's beautiful, and you can find them anywhere in the world. And you could see that my love to Koala has been enormous. And then the terrible wood fire to what happened to Koala, to our Australia, to people, to different families. And it was so sad to see many Koala try to escape away from wood fire. It's so sad to see many mother koala tried to carry her joey to run as quick as they can away from the fires it is so painful to see hundreds and hundreds koala got with starvation dehydration and die mm. with no one paying attention and my children stood in jail for for being sorry for koala for australia in my heart it just sent a message hardly you got to do something to help. But by that time, I didn't know what to do. All the story that had happened to Koala from YouTube, from the news, from newspaper, from article, from whatever media that I engaged with, each of them form a pie by pie of the story in my heart. And then it was time for appeal, Koala appeal. And I intend to get my saving for donation. And by that moment, suddenly a light bulb moment kicked on my head. And I said to myself, hang on, how about to use this money to create a book for children instead of donating this amount of money to the hospital or firefighter? 
I didn't mean that I didn't want to help the hospital or firefighter, but I meant I want to use my money to create a message, a meaningful message for children and also adults about wood fires, about our environment and how to, to protect our life, how to look after our environment properly. What a wonderful idea. That was the first burning design that I want to do for my book. The second burning design was when seeing the smoke covered in my front yard, my backyard, and I believe that all the family in Sydney experienced the same feeling. Look at the city, look at Sydney Harbour, look at Opera House. We couldn't see them at all. Mm. In my heart, I felt unsafe. I felt insecure. I felt worried for the next generation. I asked myself, what if this year or next year or in five years or 10 years, things happen again? And what would happen to the next generation mm. when our energy, our resort get lost more and more by day? And I think, I need to have a message, a message to remind everyone of us to look after Australia, to have a message to teach young children at early age on how to take care of their environment, on how to understand the wood fires and face with the wood fires in the future with their confidence, with their wisdom as well. Mm, that sounds like an incredible message. So how did the message actually come to you? You know, the actual story, how did that all come? It had been right by time. Like last year, by September, we had bushfire early already. By that time, I, I start feeling worried. My intuition told me that it would be very bad. From that moment, I start thinking about the environment, about children as I have been an early childhood educator. Yeah. I think of children benefit a lot. Yeah. And you've and also written habits to benefits for children. So you obviously care deeply about children and their future. That's right. Because that my, I don't know that my love to children, whenever I see something not say or insecure, I think about children first. I think about natural generation first. The beginning of the wood fire to November, and I still remember clearly when I was on aeroplane from Gold Coast back to Sydney, okay. and one one client on the aeroplane said, "Look that! Look! Look! Look at the wood fire!" And I looked down and I start streaming down the tear. Oh. And by that time, I feel so painful in my heart. And I from the aeroplane point of view, I could see the big part of land got burned wow. by fire mm. and I keep that keep resonating me the sadness the worry for my safety of course and for everybody's safety yeah cool. and then December it get worse and it get worse by January this year too and yeah. on and on each time each picture form in my heart and my head as well especially by January kangaroo island got burned badly southern beach of New South Wales got burned badly, Blue Mountain, and a lot of pictures about koala. My favorite animal, someone, my mm. favorite animal got killed by day, got hurt by day, and pay by pay of the story start forming in my heart. And then when the light bulb moment kicked me in my head for having a story, it was not hard for me to, uh, to create a story about koala. And one last kick, that made me choose the title as Kayla Koala and her mama was a picture of Mother Koala. Do you remember that? A picture of Mother Koala who, who tried to cover her baby. Yeah, I do. Yeah, that goes globally for that picture until now. The picture melts everybody's heart. It certainly demonstrated how devastating it was for the koalas and for you know, the mothers to keep their young safe, that's for sure. Yes, and furthermore, I was in tears when thinking if young children in that situation, it can be if the wolf pilot was in the future. Don't you believe that, Samon? Yes. That clicked in me and then I feel so painful and I think that we need to do something right now. And that is the picture that kept in my heart a message that I got to write a story about mother and a child. And I also want to raise a message of hope 
for koala and for human too. That through the pain, through struggle, through difficulty, through setback, we have hope in our life. We'll be better after that. How long did it take you to write Kayla Koala and her mama? And how rewarding was it for you uh, just penning the book and getting the illustrations done? Uh, I love the question. Um, uh, someone because I love to show up how, how hard I work for this book. Yeah. When I had everything crystallized in my heart and my mind, I was on fire. <laughs> I was on fire uh, for writing the book. And I tried to uh, have our life first. And then you know, and you know that the more our life story, the more the tear come out. It, it's sometimes a happy tear to release my, my pain for Koala, my pain for Australia, and it came out on the paper. And after many, many times of editing, so many times, as you know, it needed my second language, so many times editing, and when the story formed the way that I like, I said it's out for editing and also um, proofreading the, the story, yeah. Yeah, and then all together, it took me day and night, work overtime, three months, more than three months mm -hmm. to get the book out. It was so amazing that it came out at the time that I wish. And after two weeks, Kayla Guala got bestseller from Amazon. And deservedly so. Yes, and that my heart kept singing as I received day by day a lot of five star from the reader from Amazon, from uh, Woodweave, and uh, from uh, Reader Favorite. They only gave me five out of five stars for the book. A lot of great comments that I'm so thankful to, to do that. By giving them those five stars, obviously it's going to encourage other people to read the book. That's right, and that gave me the encouragement that I did a good job, and yeah. the book is so valuable to the reader on the hard work paid off. What were some of the barriers or difficulties that you encountered when you were writing your first children's book, Harley? Very good question again, someone. Thank you. I, I mentioned earlier that in it's my second language. That's why I worked so, so hard, day and night, someone. Sometimes I forgot eating. My husband got to, to bring the food to the table for me to eat. I forgot <laughs> to drink, I forgot to eat. And Harley, and my husband joked like this, Harley, you got to keep yourself alive for Goala, for Australia. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, and you know, after putting, pour, pouring out all of my heart and my mind, I completed the book in three months. And I'm happy that I'm still in good shape. After finishing, finishing the book, yeah, the barrier was I couldn't find any illustra illustrator in Australia. And then I worked with um, one man in India, and he recommended me to the other man who got a um, master degree in art for drawing. And the illustrator started very well through my friend. And then I connected with him and explained everything. And, you know, Indian people are very friendly. I think he said yes, and he will have it with all his heart. And I did tell him about the story, about the Australia situation. Luckily, indeed, he was a very good man and he really really worked so hard for the book he he indian he not in australia he never see gum tree he never seen koala and i i gave him a request beforehand i said i want you to manifest our beautiful koala to the best i want you to manifest our beautiful australia with gum tree with everything the really australia and really at the best fight well and he did a beautiful job yeah, we work forward, backward, forward, backward, and I'm so thankful with my imagination. If I work with children, you know that I love to have my imagination loving. And with my explanation, after that, to learn complete, like beautiful illustration that melt my heart. He did work so hard for our Australia, and I can't say thank you enough to him. They certainly are very beautiful illustrations. He depicted Australia perfectly, didn't he? Yes, and thank you for your comments and your advice, uh, Samon. And you know what? A lot of readers from America, they say they fall in love with Australia through the book. The book helped them to understand about the Wi-Fi of Australia and also see the beautiful creature. You're like an ambassador for the animals and for the country, spreading your story around the world. That's really good. Thank you, Harley.
Thank you. Thank you so much. You've also penned uh, Dazza, Save the Koalas, and Baz's Story, which is another two books for a series of three books about saving koalas for children. So tell us what the catalyst was for these books, Harley. Yeah, people said to me that Kayla Koala and her mama came out the COVID time and not many people pay, paying attention to the book, to the full list yet. Why you spend more money to have second book and third book? And I said to them, this is my heart for Australia and it's my heart for children. And the reason why I had three books are, number one, Oh, three of them landing very well a big, big message about how to look after our environment now and later. Because for Kayla Gola and her mama, just the one message, just full be a person need more detail, more, more scenario for people in Australia and around the world understand about wood fire yeah. and their damage to our life and also how to protect our environment now and then. Yeah, and the second message is, I want to leave for children in Australia and around the world a set of free books that are about our environment. That's a very with noble idea. Yeah, it, with, with beautiful message for them to read as for fun, for entertainment, for yeah. their knowledge, but also three books will carry many messages that relate to how to look after and protect koala now and later and how to look after our environment now and do something to reduce wood fires later. That's excellent. Well done and thank you. Obviously it's incredibly needed and hopefully the message will get out there with your three books in particular right now with Kayla Koala and her mama so a lot of children can understand where we're at and maybe in their life's journey and their children's journey to stop the bushfires if we we can by looking after the environment better. You, you are totally right, Simone, because with my burning desire to have the book spread the message, not for this year, not for next year, but for many years later. And this is my gift to Australia and to the world. Thank you, Harley. And it is a very special gift because Kayla Koala and her mama is incredibly special as you are giving all the proceeds towards helping displacement of koalas. How can people listening help you with this cause? And that is incredibly generous that all proceeds are going towards helping koalas. Yeah, thank you for the question. And this is one of your question is uh, helping me to achieve uh, the big purpose that I want to make for koala and for Australia. As you know that instead of using my money for donation to uh, the hospital or five items, I put all my, my, my savings in all every saving now for three books. And in my heart, I want to try my work, my money to people by having my gift to them and they pay back to me by their purchase. And I can have that money, all the money that whoever buy the book, all the money will go to go a la hospital and firefighter fundraising. I want people to know the my burning desire for Australia and I need I need their help to to have the book for their children, for their grandchildren, for their niece, nephew or whoever they know, you know. The book is in different store all over the world. But I prefer people get the book from my bookstore. Through this way, the incentive would be more for koala and firefighter. Uh, if they can reach me, they can buy the book from Fish Farm, Amazon, and whatever bookstore that they have from their app. But I just wish they get the book from my bookstore because through this, I can have more instead of more fundraising of more money for koala and firefighter. And it's so easy to order the book from my bookstore yeah. and when they order the book from my bookstore, they got 70% off. That's huge. Why the book from this phone is about $67 from Amazon for shipping and everything. The book is about $40, but from my bookstore with the shipping and with the book, it will be cost around $20 Australian. Um, after deducted the printing and shipping, all the money left over will be for koala and firefighter. That my the burning desire for them. What is your website then that they can buy the book directly from you? Uh, my website 
www.halithai.com.au and then you get to the website, you can go to the Hali bookstore. I say it again, halithai.com.au and then you just click on Hali bookstore and they can just make the order and it's very safe to make the order from my bookstore. Now, not only are the illustrations absolutely gorgeous and the story and in particular the message amazing, but the whole story is actually a poem that you wrote. Is this your first go at writing a poem? No, at first I just, um, you know, jot down whatever I have in my mind. But after that, yes, I think poem will teach you how to learn about balance and style and different things and and run it well because as yeah, an early childhood educator, I want to maximize the learning. And that's why all the time, when have, having something for children, I all the time pin up the best way for them to learn. Yeah. And that was why the story was formed in, in the poem. One thing that made me feel so happy as Kayla Goala and her mama were the first book in the world for children that relate to wood fire. And now in America, they order a book, well, Kayla Guala and her mama a lot because in California, they have very bad Wi Fi now and there. Yeah, they do. And, and this is the first book for the world that relates to uh, wood fires. And I feel so happy and proud myself of doing this. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. So, Harley, if I could give you two minutes where you would have the floor to talk to everybody on the planet, that you've got their undivided attention about the bushfires, and in particular now, because they're happening in a very bad way in California, what would you say to everybody? For two minutes, it's quite a lot for me, Simone, but I, I just say what I, I have in my mind now, okay? Okay. <laughs> every one of us in Australia and every one of us all over the world need to take action now for protecting our world, our beautiful world now. It's very important. And whatever we are doing now will have a great impact later for children, for next generation. I believe that no one would want to see their children suffer or their grandchildren suffer because of the global warming, because of wood fires or because of disaster. And I believe that prevention is always better than cure. Yeah, and the other thing is, I want every parent, every educator, everyone, whoever, can. it would be great that they, got, they need to teach young children right now the, a message of taking care of their environment, a message of understand about natural disaster, especially wood fires. And in doing this, we prepare them a courage to fight with the situation and to have hope. For a better life. Don't you agree with me? Someone? Yeah, I think it's very important to get the message out to the children that if we don't look after the environment, there's not going to be one in the future. That's so. why I agree with that. You've had an incredible life. I might just go over it very briefly that this is not obviously not your first book that you've written. You've written Waratai, you've done Habits to Benefits, and you've had an amazing life leaving Vietnam at a young age being one of the boat people, you left there on a boat and then you came to Australia as a refugee, you've been through poverty, you've been through cancer, not once but three times and you are a warrior, you're still here to tell the story. So Kayla Koala and her mama is incredibly noble but um, your life story is also one that people should hear about and they can hear about that in Waratah to find out that it doesn't matter where you come from, how much you have or you don't have, that you can actually do something. You just have to have your mind in the right place, which is why people need to um, find out more about you because you definitely have your mind in the right place to just conquer and conquer and conquer again. Thank you so much for your kind words, Simone. They mean a lot to me. Thank you. They're true. Yeah, and I think for the other uh, the other uh, aspect of my life, we need to have another another episode <laughs> of, of interview. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> do that. I'm happy to do that. If I could share my life journey to to people and inspire them to to live their best life. Definitely. Well, we'll look into that. But in the meantime, if you want to find out more about Harley, definitely www 
harleythai.com. Uh, one more word from my website. It is uh, www.harleythai.com.au. AU, because I'm Australian. I'm very proud that that's why everything I got to have AU in that. And I spell my name for them to find me easily. Hali Thai, H A L E T H A I, on the lowercase. Okay. HarleyThai.com.au. Yeah. Yeah. You're also on Facebook? Yeah, I'm also on Facebook, Instagram, uh, also LinkedIn, YouTube. Twitter as well. I, I don't play with all of them a lot. I don't have much time. No. <laughs> You're busy writing books, saving the environment. <laughs> That's right. That's my passion. My, mm -hmm. my passion in life. Well, I really appreciate your time today sharing the message about Kayla Koala and her mama. People can go online and get it now and preferably to harleythai.com.au so you can buy it straight from source and give back to looking after our environment, saving the koalas and also for the firefighters as well. Harley, thank you so much for putting all this time in free of charge, you know, to help um, future generations look after our environment. A very noble woman you are. An absolute champ. Thank you so much again, Simone, for having me today for your podcast and spending time with me that really gave me a feeling of um, fulfill my mission of sharing my message to Australia, Simone. Thank you so much. And I also want to say thank you to all listeners who listen to my message. And I wish them all the best. And please buy my book for me to have more money for my fundraising to help our koala and our firefighter. And Australia need your help, everyone. Harley needs your help, yes. so please go and check out her website, harleythai.com.au. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. And my guests from around the world. Thank you for being a part of this show. The Simon Filer Podcast. Catch you next time. It's a wrap. <laughs>